e creio. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Keith Prince. Today, I'd like to take a quick look at a possible use case for anti-aliasing when 3D printing. I have an Elegoo Mars, but it should be the same on any other 3D printer. If you are not familiar, anti-aliasing is the technique of using partially transparent pixels to smooth out the jagged edges that come with pixelated images. Resin 3D printing is generally done by using light from a pixel-based digital display to cure resin in layers, building up a 3D model. The pixel size on my Elegoo Mars is only about 47 microns, which is large enough to see sometimes, especially when stacked layer after layer. I'll call this banding. The possible use case is this, the one ring. I printed one for my daughter and had to print it at the smallest possible layer height, 10 microns, for the writing on it to even be legible. But it was so tiny, you had to look closely to see it, and the banding became very apparent. First, the ring. The ring is from user Tato713 on Thingiverse, link in the description. I used the size 22.33 millimeters because it fits all the fingers on my hands. When I got it into Blender, I noticed that the quality of the sculpt left something to be desired. I briefly tried to make my own, but in the end I found it would be easier to just alter this one to my liking. I used the remesh tool in the sculpting interface to provide a finer mesh without altering the details, then used the smooth tool with a very low falloff to smooth things out just a little bit. I was honestly not sure it would make any difference, so I decided I would print both the original and my altered version of the ring, just to see. In Chi2Box, I added supports to the original ring as it is much smaller in file size and easier for my computer to handle while recording. I'm still new to the hobby of 3D printing. I felt like I should add supports to some of these letters here even though they're really tiny. Let me know if you think that was unnecessary. They weren't very noticeable on the end product. Back in Blender, I aligned the altered version of the ring with the original, then duplicated the supports and added them to the altered one. I then added a tiny little note so I would know which was the original and which was the altered ring. Finally, back in Chitu Box, we get slicing. Here's a fairly informal look at how long it took each to slice and save while screencasting on my computer. This isn't very scientific, but I did record each separately after allowing my computer to rest. It is notably saving time that is most affected by anti-aliasing. In the end, I don't find these numbers to be all that impactful as I'm not actually doing anything during this time, just waiting. So, how did it turn out? First of all, as for my altered version versus the original, on the original non-anti-aliased ring using magnification, I was only able to find one spot that looked like this, but couldn't get a picture of it. So it wasn't really necessary for that in the end. Before priming though, the altered rings did seem to hide the banding slightly better, but not much. And interestingly, though it wasn't very apparent in these pictures, the altered version seems to be a slightly different shade. I suspect it's reflecting light a little differently because it's less faceted. As for the banding, in some spots yes, anti-aliasing does a great job of reducing it, but not so much in others. Until I primed them. After priming, the banding became much more difficult to see, with the effect more pronounced on the altered versions. After painting, the banding is virtually non-existent on all the anti-aliased rings. I had to really search and with light shining at the right angle, I was still able to find at least one spot of visible banding on every ring, but it was hard to see even when knowing where to look. So in conclusion, will anti-aliasing help you get rid of banding? Yes, it seems that as long as you're going to paint your model, it does an excellent job of getting rid of banding. If you printed something and aren't happy with the banding you see on it, give anti-aliasing a try. The next step would be testing anti-aliasing on a spiky model to see if it negatively affects the quality of the spikes. It should be something small and able to print quickly. Let me know if you can think of a good one in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, then consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.